Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. We have seen an absolute explosion in behavioral disorders being diagnosed in children over the last few decades, ranging from conditions including ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, to autism, very different disorders there, but the rates of them being diagnosed have increased substantially. For instance, over the last few decades, autism diagnoses in children in the United States has trebled in 20 years. That is an unbelievable statistic. So of course we have to ask what is going on? And I have my own thoughts as to what is causing this, ranging from the way it's diagnosed to also environmental factors that are very different nowadays to what they were 50 or 100 years ago. But let's focus specifically on the link between food dyes and behavioral disorders in children because this is something that I've been asked about. It's come up on the news and I want to share some information with you here, some articles and some research. So let's start off with this article. So this was in NBC News published about a year and a half ago. Artificial food dyes may cause behavior problems. A bill aims to warn parents. Parents who remove synthetic colors like Red 40 from their kids' diets call it transformative, but the FDA has said dyes don't affect most children. California hopes to change that. So there you go then, the FDA, that bastion of really caring for the health and well-being of the citizens of the United States, says that it is not a problem in most kids. So I guess that's it then, if the FDA says it. Well, not quite, because let me share with you some additional concerns. So we have this article here, and I will share the link with you down below. This talks about the experiences of a family who changed their child's diet. They cut out food dyes, these food colorings, and had a dramatic improvement. So this was a child who was on two psychiatric medications for his aggression and had been in weekly therapy since kindergarten. It was in October 2020 when he was in second grade that a relative suggested that they cut out artificial food dyes, which had been in his diet as a nightly reward, as well as many of the fruit snacks, chips and drinks that he consumed. The dietary change did what thousands of dollars in neuropsychological testing, psychiatry appointments and therapy had not been able to do. Within four weeks, he was a calmer, happier child. I love stories like that. As a doctor whose goal is to get people off medications, if at all possible, I love hearing that a natural lifestyle change produced a dramatic improvement, but it's hardly a surprise. The question is, was it just the food dyes or anything else? We had a little boy instead of the Incredible Hulk. And they talk about how this family is part of a growing number of families who believe there is a strong connection between synthetic food dyes and children's behavior, something the FDA does not entirely agree with. In 2011, the FDA reviewed the possible link between artificial food dyes and hyperactivity and determined no causal relationship could be established for children in the general population who have not been diagnosed with behavioral disorders. So what is California specifically doing about this? Well, a state senator in California says freshly compiled research proves that artificial food colorings which appear on nutrition labels as Red 40, Yellow 5 and Blue 1, among other names, negatively affect many children and parents have the right to be informed. He was hoping at the time to pass a bill that called for warning labels to be placed on any foods containing such dyes sold in the state of California. What else does the article say? Well, it says that while artificial dyes are commonly found in candies, cereals and other foods in the US, they are scant in Europe. That's actually the case with many food additives and I'll certainly talk about more in the future, but let's stick to food dyes here. That's because synthetic dyes were all but eliminated from foods there after a 2007 study in the United Kingdom found a link between combinations of artificial food colorings and hyperactivity in children, even those without ADHD. And the article does report on the results of research studies actually dating back to the 1970s, which show an association between children's behavioral disorders and food colorings. We'll touch more on some research in a moment. And here's another article here in ABC News. This is from 2011, actually, so quite a while ago. Food dyes may exacerbate hyperactivity in sensitive children. So has that bill in California actually passed? Well, yes, this is an update from April 2023. California Assembly passes bill that would ban the sale of Skittles. 
The measure would prohibit the manufacture, sale or distribution of any food product in California containing the chemicals red dye number three and other food additives. Well, that's a start. And my message to Skittles or any other food company or product that is worried it won't be able to sell it is don't add it to your product then. But how about the actual evidence behind food dyes? What do these studies show us? I'd like to share with you two studies here. So here's a study from Neurotherapeutics in 2012, Artificial Food Colors and Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Symptoms. Conclusions to Die For. That is a great title. I've got the abstract here. Again, I will share the link with you down below. The effect of artificial food colors, AFCs, on child behavior has been studied for more than 35 years with accumulating evidence from imperfect studies. I'm going to go right down to the conclusions here. AFCs appear to be more of a public health problem than an ADHD problem. AFCs are not a major cause of ADHD per se, but seem to affect children regardless of whether or not they have ADHD, and they may have an aggregated effect on classroom climate if most children in the class suffer a small behavioral decrement with additive or synergistic effects. Possible biological mechanisms with published evidence include the effects on nutrient levels, genetic vulnerability, and changes in brain activity. How about autism then? A very different disorder, but what does the evidence say? Well, here we have a meta-analysis, the strongest type of medical research that one can get, published in 2020. Food color and autism, a meta-analysis. Autism has been increasing dramatically since its description in 1943. The CDC in 2008 has identified 1 in 59 children, 1 in 37 boys and 1 in 151 girls has autism spectrum disorder. Many families with autistic children avoid food dyes in their diet in order to avoid behavioral issues. A study reported that there is a correlation between yellow dye and sleep disturbance. Food colors blue 1 and 2, green 3, red 3, yellow 5 and 6, citrus red 2 and red 40 can trigger many behaviors in most kids. Artificial food color usually contains petroleum and is manufactured in a chemical process that includes formaldehyde, aniline, hydroxides, and sulfuric acids. That's always something to keep in mind, the very artificial, fake, and factory-led way that many of these fake foods are produced. The US FDA is yet to study the effects of synthetic dyes on behavior in children. Well, that doesn't surprise me. A study conducted at Southampton University in England found a link between food dyes and hyperactive behavior in children. The research does not prove that food coloring actually causes autism spectrum disorder, but there seems to be a link. So there you have it, some evidence. Now, is it plausible that food dyes alone could affect behavior in children? Yes, it is plausible. But is it a bigger factor than the general fact that so many kids nowadays are fed horrible, toxic, fake foods, high in sugars, other ultra-processed foods, other additives, is it really dyes that are doing it? That is the question. Kids now grow up in a very different environment. They are exposed to so many more toxins than in years gone by, 50 or 100 years ago. And some important points to keep in mind with food dyes is that food corporations deliberately target children. These trillion dollar organizations that are all about profit and the bottom line deliberately target children with their fake colorful foods. So my advice would be as follows. Always read ingredient labels if you are a parent and you're probably better off avoiding food dyes. Now will one food alone, a candy or another snack, set your child off on a path to a behavioral disorder? Probably not. But the problem is that kids nowadays are eating way too many of these foods. So my advice, as with all fake foods, is that you are probably better off avoiding dyes completely. So check those food labels, those artificial food colorings, etc. Keep them well away. And please keep in mind that at a very young age, particularly, crucial brain development processes are occurring. So you want to try to avoid any artificial toxins any way you can. Please minimize them while the brain is developing. Many of these are banned in Europe. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. Also check out my online course and my uncensored platform. Those links are down below. Have a great weekend and we will chat again very soon.